all laminations from a microwave oven. If you can find one that's got TIG welding across all the sides besides the uh, I and E splice. Um, if you can be picky, grab them. Because uh, put a little grind on that face right where you want to separate them. If you do a grind here and a grind there, um, you can use cold chisel and a nice sharp cold chisel and split them open, separate them, scribe a line, do your grinds. Um, first thing you want to do is cut the lamination, the, uh, the uh, coils off and just punch them out so you don't disturb the cores. Um, don't try and put them in a, put the core in the vise and pound the windings out because by the time you're done doing that you're going to start splitting these up. It's not what you want. I want to keep them so they stayed all together. Um, this coil here is just on there for sampling because I just put this together not too long ago. Um, so I think uh, these were uh, 6 volts and the blue were uh, 12 volts. Um, 1 inch Neo and 52 magnets again on the end. I had uh, bar magnets. They're, uh, you can see them in here. These guys, I've got some inch and a quarter square in 52s in there, separated by paper. Makes it easy to get at them. Uh, but I had three of these on, uh, there's actually seven there, but I had three on each end of this core. Didn't like how it acted. And what I mean by that is, it seems like when the magnet flux is right to the tip on both ends, um, it's just too much. So you end up leaving some here and it ends up blocking and you don't end up um, oscillating the, the flux because if you want to oscillate the flux going through here, down there, and then that way and then negative cycle or positive or depending on how you got things wired. So your flux is going like this. This way and that way. You're just directing it. Not forcing it, you're just creating a path um, with the tickler coil. I had a uh, smaller coil on there, um, and that seemed to do good too. I'm just just wound this on there and trying that to see if I can see a, an improvement. Just trying to get a feel for the transformer core and uh, see how it acts with the flux. So, this is what we're at. Idle at power supply is powering, powering the, um, the amplifier from the June Tech signal generator. So, this is where we're at. Idle, same as the other video. Nothing's changed here. You saw uh, part 2 and you already, or part 3, or part 1 actually. We're on part 3. Um, so this is what we got. I'm going to turn it on. And you can see the difference. Idle. And then activated. Off. So we got 33, 330 mils. 810. Whatever you want to call it. 820. There is sampling the uh, input right here on the drive on the tickling coil and then this scope here is the output of this so that's what we got peak to peak almost six volts obviously I need to put coils on all four corners it'll be a real test I might try and make thimbles I haven't decided yet. I might just wrap this with uh, Gorilla Tape and uh, just put some wire on there and see what I got before I get too fancy. Uh, this is 20 hertz. This 50. 
60, 70, 80, seems to be very responsive. Yeah, cut off is right here. You can hear the flux changing in because of the raspy sound of it. As soon as we get around 100, back into it again. Don't know what that's all about. There's the drop off. And I'll go up. That's just nothing. Yep. So, it's a possibility in comparison to the ferrite view cores that I was using. 120 hertz isn't bad. If I had that all filled up, I wonder what I'd be getting right now. We'll find out. So the steel seems promising. We'll see. Look for the next video, guys. If I got time tomorrow, I'm going to... Uh, I think it's like 1, one o'clock or 2 o'clock in the morning, so I'm going to give up on this for now. Been at it all day. Um, let me shut this off. So, steel seems to be a little better with the flux switch switching.